gave the little wink. <laughs> That's Great, the running time is perfect. With rhythm like that, this show's got to be a success. And with that gruesome female impersonation number of yours, Bumsy, oh, it'll be sensational. Sam, while we pass out the compliment, no wonder they call you the Grand Slammer Rhythm. Boy, you are perfect. Give that man a bow. <laughs> and Jim, what's the setup? I think it's only fair that we should know what it's all about. Well, Harry's meeting Madame Deborah at the stake. She's willing to put up half the money if we put up the other half. Well, who's that man coming from Chicago? That's our other half. Uh, Mr. Cummings by name. Oh, it'll be colossal. It'll be sensational. Oh. It don't go any further, I understand. I she do. wasn't on that train. Or the following one either. And she won't be on the next one. Now, wait a minute. You know your pappy's always taken care of. Yeah. Now, go back to your rooms and relax. I'll see you all at the rent party this evening. Come on, don't worry about it. Everything's under control. So long, I'll see you later. Silence. Boy, was that a deal. Let me have one of those. I really need it. Man, oh man, the jinx is really with us. You're not kidding. Looks like blue skies, and then this day takes a run out. What's more, the rent's due for the entire cat. Yeah, and we haven't got a dollar among the whole outfit. Well, that's Donaldson, the landlord's worry. Well, what are we going to tell Cummings when he arrives? Never mind Cummings. And anyway, you'll get as good as that. And to make matters worse, Cummings is bringing his two daughters with him. But can't you why him not to come? How can I do that? They're already on their way here. Look at the position I'm in. The last show I produced in Chicago was a flop. And I met this Mr. Cummings, and I fell for his daughter, Cristola. I told him I was a big shot producer. I sold him a bill of goods. Well, I... And he said any time I had half the money, he'd put up the other half. So I advertised for the other half. And so I phoned Mr. Cummings and told him we had half the money. I told him she was beautiful and wealthy. Well, she uh, is beautiful, isn't she? And with money. What woman is it? I uh, cut the comedy. At any rate, Cummings went for it in a big way. And believe you me, he's the crank when it comes to associates and surroundings. It really would be something if you knew we were running a red party up there to help us eat. Now look, when Cummings and his daughters arrive, I want you to... Mm. It's them. They're here. Cummings and his daughters. The train must have been early. But, but I'll back if she's not here. Well, look, entertain them. Tell them the train was late. Tell them anything. Only do something. your watch where you're going. Now, what do you want? What's the matter with you guys? Here we is getting ready to get a big rent party upstairs and you guys don't even show up. Never mind the show up. This is the show down. And maybe you don't know it, but from now on, you're a butler. Butler? That's the same part I get in every show you do. Look, this ain't no show. This is the real thing. Now comb your hair and wash your face and... Hurry back as quick as you can. Five into 42. No, five into 50. That's easy. Let me see, 18, 21. Now, if I kick him out in the street, I'll get nothing. Ah, if I let him stay, uh, I'll get nothing either. There's no use to tossing no coin. I'll lose out either way. Oh, me. Mr. Carlson, tell the ride for Central Park. Oh, what a lovely park. This is Harry Dick, my co-producer. We've just finished the rehearsal. I'm very pleased to meet you all. Uh, you're the two charming daughters. Mm -hmm. And you're old Mr. Cummings, who's the crank on the story. Uh, what's that? Uh, that's one of the lines now you play. You see, we fairly live our part. I say, Jim, this partner you spoke of, where is she? Where is she? Oh, where is she? Uh, Harry, where is she? Uh, Harry, where is she? Oh, she, uh, uh, she's late. I mean, that is, uh, <laughs> train was late. Well, uh, let's be comfortable. Won't you take your hats off? I think that's all. All right, young man. Let's get on to business. I'm sorry, sir. Won't you try the couch? Uh, I, but, uh, 
The refreshments are here. Oh, first thing, the food here. I'm both hungry and thirsty. It's a long train ride. What could you say to Come on, baby. If you want to go, come on. I'm tired all the time. I don't know why you always bring the parties on the third side. Now, look, don't do me no favors. If you want to go upstairs, come on, let's go. <laughs> That's exactly what's worrying Jim and me. Until I get my roof rent. Our partner, no doubt. I shall greet her. Ah, come right in, my dear. What do you mean, my dear? And who are you? Who is this old crackpot? Who did you expect? Bang Johnson? Well, what is it, Mr. Donald? I want my room rent. Well, you can't expect Mr. Cummings to pay your rent. Listen, you. I've got enough out of you. Either you pay your rent, or out you go. Oh, great. Well played, my good friend. Or you'll be terrific in the park. Is he one of your actors? Oh, yes, Crystal Lee. Gruesome, isn't he? Uh, he's playing the villain in our new play. I'm no villain, and I'm no play actor. I'm an honest man, and I want my room rent. He's so realistic. He's wonderful. What's the name of your I want my room rent. I want my room rent, a good title. And another thing, this rent party business has got to stop. Come on, Jack, come on. Oh, come on, me. Don't come on. Let me stop this here. Let's go on a bit, boy. Have some fun. Ah, I see you brought the hors d'oeuvres. That'll give us an appetite for dinner. Come on, friend. Get a load of this. Okay. You like that, Father. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I tell you what, you keep getting money out of the hat. Maybe if we give them enough food, they'll forget about the partner. I say, Jim, hadn't we better wait until our partner arrives? Oh, no, he drink and be merry. I hope. Well, what am I supposed to do? Look, 
You're supposed to be a Madame Deborah from Paris. You're supposed to be very wealthy and ready to finance our new show. And above all, you've got to be rich. Yeah, but I left my cigars upstairs. Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Madame Deborah from Paris. Oh. Ah, charmed. From Paris? From Gay Paris? From Gay Paris? From Paris? From Paris. From hunger? Uh, tell me, madam, on which side are you Parisian or American? Oh, I'm mean a little on both sides. Oh, madam is interested in music, uh, the opera. How oh, interesting. I'm also interested in the opera. You call it opera, I call it burlesque. There's nothing burlesque about the opera I've seen. Then you ain't seen nothing. Now, in the strip tease. Oh, madam, madam, madam. You look a little tired. Perhaps you should refresh yourself. Oh, well, I could use a couple of beers. Come to think of it, I can stand some refreshments myself. My good man, we'll have some beer. Well, I'm going to get any beer. Don't be so particular. You don't have a bad job in the neighborhood. And as I was saying, a couple of beers. Wait a minute, man, come buy some beer. Where's the butcher? Come on, Don. Man, want to buy me some beer. Hey, you had to go push it. Come on, Don. Every time we get in the fast to get in on a freebie, you got to spoil it. The man is going to buy some beer. I get it. What kind of guy are you? You know I'm just mean to all of us. I'm through. Is that the way to show your gratitude? Who we played Philadelphia? Did not borrow your last fifty dollars to help us get home. Think of that. Think of it. That's number one on my worry parade. Now we ask you to do us one little favor. They want this, and you refuse. <laughs> and do you remember the time when I only had a saw bucket? You took that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but I forgive you for what money you lend us. I said, you want beer. Give him the money, Bumpsy. <laughs> oh, you forgive me if I give him the money for the beer? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you is now the finance <laughs> Boy, what a girl. You know what to do. Pick yourself up, go to work on Mr. Cummings, and then heal back the show. And you'll be the star. All right, get going while I make myself a lure. Oh, mommy, you're the weekend. 
Plus, I'm going to throw the whole bunch of them out in the morning. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, you know these people? Well, slightly. But for the present, I don't want them to know that I'm here. It's okay as long as you can pay your rent. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about the rent. That would be a very small item. Uh, now I know you're going to get one of these large rooms. Uh, step right in, Miss Martin. Thank you very much. The rest are on this floor, too. And if they make too much noise, just call me. And don't forget that for the present, I want to remain in Cognito. I don't care what you remain in. It's so you can pay your rent. All these bells. I'm glad to meet all of you. Now, what do you want? I'm here to see my ooh la la la, Madame de Borat. Right over there in that room there. Uh, here's a room belonging to a Harry Bid, but she has it for now. Marcelle, it is that Gaston from Paris, <laughs> who tries to cross the ocean, who came to America, because I know you are gone. Yes? No. Ah, you cannot fool me, Marcelle. <laughs> she must be out. That is impossible. I just see her come in. You just seen who come in? Marcelle, Madame de Barat. Ma'am, she's been inside here for hours. You say she's not in. Then you say she is here for hours. King of a dad, I just see her coming. And I'm going to see you go right out. Wait, I cannot go. I love her too, too much. She's beautiful. She's different. She has eyes. She has ears. She has nose. Ah, yes. She is different. She has eyes, ears, and a nose. That would make her different. Bah. You are what you call stupid. I shall return. But in the meantime, Gaston de l'Equatrium, Perdusium, to la Pousse Café, still an auto, a propos from me, Paris, we'll see you later. Yes? I might as well throw it all out now while I'm in the mood. I couldn't help but overhear someone see Madame Deborah. Oh, I'm getting sicker and sicker all the time. Why, that man isn't in love with her eyes and ears and nose. It's her money. Uh, uh, what's that? Well, I know her by reputation from Paris. She's very wealthy, has fools of money. Well, now, uh, that puts new gravy in the frying pan. I'll see about that right now. Uh, oodles of money. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I must say that I'm not altogether impressed with your rear view. How dare you? I was expecting a terrorist. What, all this? And a terrorist, too? But it's atmosphere, Mr. Cummings. You see, well, anybody in my position could have a penthouse and a garden, but, well, I prefer to live the life of my play with my actors. That's yeah. right. Anybody in your position could have all of that, Mr. Walton, and you should, too. Uh, Mr. Cummings was right. By not being impressed, I pleaded with you and Mr. Davis to take the penthouse when you moved in. No, you prefer to live among the common actors. But that's not going to do any longer. I'm going to fix this garden right here and now. But Mr. Donaldson, I mean, I... No buts. Music should be in there and we'll have a garden party to celebrate in tonight. I'm going to fix it all myself. Because I won't dare imagine Deborah to have every comfort. Now you people go upstairs. Why? And I'll take care of my own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to fix it all myself. Uh-huh. Ah, but then I follow myself. I ring the bell. Uh-huh. She's not there. And yet she is there for hours. Wait, 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 wait. There in the house. Right across the street. Now then, how can she be in and out? Yes, the outfit she's already in. Oui, 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 oui. Four, three, Sandra. He speaks the American slang. I am what you call. How did they call it in because I don't get hot? That he, the majority, shall not say no, no to me. 
Na Associação de Equatrião, Zé do Zéão, Zé do Fusco de Afé, Zé do Nordão, Fábio de Ferreira. Oui, oui. Ah, Zé Bell. Hey, you! Why don't you answer that bell? Just to do everything all by myself. All the time, all by myself. Just when I'm getting the yard cleaned up for Madame Deborah. Aha, I am back. Aha, Mr. Mrs. Christmas. She is in. No, there's the room. You who? My Sherry, it is I. The Gaston de la Quatrième, de la Deuxième, de la Fousse Café. I guess she's down out. You are what you call the one grand nuisance. You know too much about my sherry. She's not your sherry. She's my sherry. Aha. Uh -huh. Then you are compromised. Now I understand you. Speak of a janitor. I'll hear another one of those cracks out of you. I'm going to let loose. Poo poo to you. Who spoke to you, you old man? Now, 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 Well, it must be that I don't know where. But I'm in a But I'm in a me 99 cents in a dime store. <laughs> you, of course, had lots of love affairs in Paris. Love affairs? Child, I remember when the object set you to chase me all over the boulevard. They really did? Well, not exactly, but I like to talk about it. <laughs> you know, I find the men so interesting, don't you? Well, I never cared for men. Oh, that is only a few, a very select few. Why, a lovely woman like you should have no difficulty. Uh, child, I got to smoke. Just got to smoke. It's my nerves. Dear me, I don't think that I have a cigarette in the place. Cigarette? I don't smoke no cigarette. These here's what I smoke. A cigar? Now tell me. Yeah, all the ladies in uh, Paris smoke. It's no boulevard custom. Oh, really? Uh, perhaps I could try one. Yeah? Go out of here, child. Enjoy yourself. I might as well try everything they do in Paris.
is a life. My, my, what a delightful walk. Now I'll really be able to enjoy that big dinner I spoke about. Oh, just make yourself comfortable, sir. Harry and I will be with you in just a second. Won't you, uh, uh, <laughs> Harry, we've got to find Bumps. Imagine Mr. Cummings wanting to marry him. And what about that dinner he's supposed to enjoy? I don't know anything about him. Now, what do you suppose he's done? Do you think he... Do you suppose he's... Stop the double talk. This is serious. And of course, I had to walk all the way home in a stocking feet. What are we waiting for? What's going on here? Just an old Boulevard custom, boys. Just an old Boulevard custom. Ah, uh, between these steps and those bells, I'm never going to be able to finish this picture. Oh, me. Hey, you people up here on this floor. This is Donaldson, your landlord. You ain't seen me in a long time, cause you've been too busy dodging me. But I'm not here after the rest. I have a proposition. All actors will get a week's rent free. You have to entertain in my garden party tonight. While you're entertaining in the rent party, I'm staging a party for Madame Deborah, and I'll throw in uh, 10 bucks. Uh, 10 bucks, I said, for the refreshment to close the deal. Well, I told you to You guys just don't seem to understand. I owe you a new mother. You're growing up. You need someone to guide you. But, Father, my ideas are different. So am I. We're the ones who should marry. Then we could build a home and look after you. Nonsense. You're both too young. Why, when I was your age... Times I... have changed, Father. Besides, we're both old enough to know what we're doing. I'll not hear of it. Why, it's, it's absurd. It's... It... Oh, dear. Now, when the time comes... I have two nice gems picked out for you in Chicago. But all hearts are uh, here, Father. Uh, who are the two scoundrels? They're not scoundrels. They're nice. And they're trying hard. That means everything. But who are they? Oh, Harry and Jim. Harry and Jim? But you don't know them. After all, you only met them in a business way. Jim and I got to know each other pretty well when we were in Chicago. And I feel as though I've known Harry all of my life. Please listen to this, Father. I know the boys in this group. But you should know them better. Have you forgotten you just met Madame Deborah? It might be a good idea to consult her about the matter. You know, she's one of the interested parties. When I make a decision, it's, it's final. And I've definitely made up my mind to marry her. And what about us? Yes, Father, what about us? If she approves, then you both shall marry. Ah, my dear children, tonight shall be a night of nights. It'll be the one great moment in my life when I announce my engagement to the charming and lovable Madame Deborah. Wow! <laughs> My patience is what you call exhausted. No longer can I wait. Oui, 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 oui. Tonight, I know Rafa Vidal, yes? I what you call need him. Then I find her. I take her in my arms. And then? And then? And then? then then I announce my engagement to the lovely and charming Madame de Bora. Mm. Wow! Here I the I think I'll get limbered up before I see my charming Madame Deborah. Take it, Professor. <laughs> she is. Tonight I'm announcing my engagement to charming Madame Deborah. Wow! Eat, drink, and be merry, let 
to joy the unrefined. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to introduce the daughter of my dear friend, uh, Christola. I haven't rehearsed it. I mean your song. The king of Heidi Ho one day called out his band to play. And when the band began to swing, the king began to sing. He said, rip up your band, ooh, bobble, leave up, boy. to announce my engagement. But I'm announcing my engagement. But my engagement means everything to me. It means bigger and better apartment houses in Harlem. And my engagement means everything to me. It means a bigger and better family. Well, I'll be the happiest man in Chicago. Your fellas got so many engagements, why don't you leave? Not until I inform you of my great love, my dear Madam Deborah. And not until I inform you of my great love, my dear Madam Deborah. Call me. Father, please, not now. Wait until the entertainment is over. Crystal is right, Father. Now is not the time. Very well. But I can hardly wait. Just ain't fair. Just ain't Entertainment up to this point has been a bit on the jive side. Now we shall go to the sublime. My little protege next door. A wonderful little protege, you say. She plays a wonderful piano. And speaking of piano, you say, they used to call me Old Haiti. Come along, my dear. Girl, he be easy. Ah. Girl. Ah.
Would you all care to go upstairs and see how the rehearsal's coming on? Well, you Would you like to be a pleasure? Now all we have to do is hope and pray. By the way, uh, what did you say the name of that show while they're rehearsing upstairs? It's called the Red Party. The Red Party. Hmm, that's an unusual name. There's nothing unusual about that. That goes on every night in Harlem. And I guess you all know it's the custom. When you go upstairs to the rehearsal, you're dropping a little donation. Uh, I see another Paris custom. No, honey, Harlem custom. Strictly Harlem custom. Well, uh... How about, uh, ten dollars? Why, that's a pack of donations. I'll make it twenty. Come on, lollipop, let's go before I lose all my indiscretion. Boy, what is it? Dear, your father's dead wrong. How can he marry that? It's the only way he'll permit our marriage. He leaves it all to Madame Deborah, and he's determined to marry her. But it's out of the question. I'm... Evidently, you're not concerned about our marriage. If you stop Madame Deborah, you stop us. I know, but there must be something we can Why do. Why are you so worried about her? I thought I was the only one on your mind. Oh, you know you are, darling. It's only that I... Excuse me, but uh, if you two lovebirds would break it up for a minute, uh, we'd like to get a word in. Yes, we decided to make it a double way. Wow. Well, that looks like it leaves it up to us. We'll put it up to your father's right now. I want you to do the same for me in one of my pictures. Will do. Dollar. Got it. Shut up, man. Ah, uh, yes. The donation. That's right. Here, my friend. <laughs> what a sucker I am. Right in my own house. What a woman can do to me. Just make yourself at home, my dear. You've got a surprise in store for you. I hope my Madame Deborah won't be long. Your Madame Deborah? Why, of course, my Madame Deborah. I'm going to marry her. That's what you think. I'm the one she's going to. Now look at here. Now look at here. I'm 
want to cry, but why should I? It's misery. If you don't want me, it's up to you. I'll just have to look around for somebody new, cause I refuse. So goodbye. necessary for you to dress like this to entertain us at the party? Come in my room and refresh yourself. Really, I found you. You know, you are much too nice a person to go to all this trouble. I don't think I'm so nice. I guess I hurt the boys with Mr. Cummings. And I feel badly about it. You tried, and that's all that I want to know. Now, I'm going downstairs to the garden and talk to Mr. Cummings. You rest yourself. Rest. What compound has done for getting the better of me? I'm through. I'm telling you, I'm just plain face. Everything is going wrong. Everything is that thing. And so after all this, I'm through. We leave tomorrow morning for Chicago. Say, I'm sorry. I did the best I could to make your visit cheerful. Cheerful? 
You introduce me to Madame Debra, I want to marry her, then I find out that every man in the whole building is being lured by her charm. Do you call that cheerful? It isn't Jim's fault because you were fascinated by Madame Debra. After all, we did come to New York on business only, as you say. You're right. It was on business only. But now, there'll be no love affairs, and there'll be no business. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like I made a mess of the whole thing. Oh, I'm not blaming you. It just wasn't meant to be, that's all. Oh, I should have told you everything in the beginning. But then you must have known I was broke. I did know it. And still I admired the way you tried to keep up your courage. Today's been a big day in my life. I'll never forget it. Stop. Well, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I've done all I could. What are you two kids looking so gloomy about with so much excitement? And that's just the trouble. There's too much excitement. Oh, when you're in love, nothing else matters. It's not doing us any good. Father's taking his soul and he's home tomorrow. But he knows you intend to marry. Yes, but since he's lost that Madame Deborah, he's taking it out on us. Well, what do you intend doing about it? Well, there's nothing I can do. I'm broke. Francine knows it. Pretty soon, the whole world can know it as far as I'm concerned. Well, now, I wouldn't exactly say that. You know, when you're in love, you're wealthy. Didn't you know that? Francine, where's your father? I'd like to go and have a little talk with him. Sitting over there sulking like a baby. Well, cheer up, you two. I'll see you later. I take it you're enjoying the entertainment, Mr. Cummings. Why, uh, quite so, Miss... Uh, uh, Martin. Just plain, everyday Martin. I don't seem to remember you. Why, oh, I've been around all day, but then, of course, you were so busy with Madame Deborah. I never I... want to hear that name again. And because of that, you want to spoil your two daughters' happiness? Well, I'm no longer interested in love affairs. Would you mind if I watched the evening's entertainment with you? Why, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Just in case you change your mind Though it takes a year or more I'll be hanging round your door Just in case you change your mind For you told me in advance that you would never leave me But not knowing positively Well, I thought I'd take a chance And now, now I'm trying my best to laugh
Oh, my darling, my beloved Madame de Bora, at last you are mine. I will wait not one minute longer. I will take this cover from you, and I will kiss your eyes, and then your lips, and then your arms. Ah, but first, I will kiss your lips. Monsieur, she is uh, the Madame uh, Deborah. Idiot, this is an old hag. Who called me an old hag? This is not Madame Deborah. This, this is a hippopotamus. I don't know what that last crap means, but what I think it is, me and you going to fight. Oh, I'll stop the blood, the Best I will kill you two. And then I will cause this stuff. If you do, you'll have to have a knife a mile long. Here I go 
about it. Everything's going to be all right. And now, I shall proceed to... I'm quiet. Look, I tell him quiet. Look, I'm going to see your father right now, and I'll straighten everything out. I'll tell him once and for all. No. You from the air to the air. Ah! 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 No, no, monsieur. No, I've had enough. No more weaning for me. I shall return to my music, to my singing. Prairie duck a dormez vous. Prairie duck a dormez vous. Oh, monsieur. You will see me no more. Now, me tie me up. Please, monsieur. No more. No more. I say, Jim, I owe my life to you. If there's ever anything I can do... Why, you can let him marry for so long. And you can let me marry Harry. What do you say, Father, please? Well, <laughs> I suppose I should. But one thing, there'll be no rehearsing shows in your own home when you're married. Uh, especially rent party shows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, young people should get married. You're so right. Yeah, I feel kind of lonesome myself. And any woman who has a crazy Frenchman chasing after her with a knife should have some protection. Why, Mr. Cummings? You know, I'm glad I'm through with that, Madam Deborah. Oh, but you're not. You're just beginning to. I don't get it. Well, you see, I am Madam Deborah. Oh. You, Madam Deborah? Well, I wanted to surprise you. That's why I sent that wire saying that I couldn't come. But after I got here and found out what was happening, it was just too good to be pissed, believe me. Well, now. Well, I'm ready to back the boy. <laughs> and you can count me in for my 50%. Well, what do you say? Let's, let's put it in a joint account for the kids and for you and me. Oh, Mr. Cummings. 